Hi, sixth grade. I'm not here today, but you're going to go ahead and continue working on your Google Sheets Camp Palmer project. We worked on it last week and got our column headings in and your um, six campers, and we entered in some dollar amounts. So we have a few more columns to finish with calculations, and we're going to make a couple charts today. So if you can go under Google Sheets and click on View Assignment and open up your spreadsheet over here on the side. And here you will find um, the work you did last time with all of your column headings. You should have six campers total. We went in and we entered in the amount for room and board, food, supplies, and then outposting, high ropes, picture, and DVD were optional things. So you put in the dollar amounts for those people. And then total cost is an item where we did a calculation and we added up all the numbers in the four optional activities and that's where we got that answer so when you look here you see an answer here but over here you'll see equal sum c2 colon i2 means add up all the numbers from c to i and that's how much it costs a camper to go to camp and because some of these things are optional their costs will vary we then went in and put the total amount of fundraising so you all had to sell stuff for camp and we put in a dollar amount of what you collected and turned into Mr. Weshi. Again, we just put random numbers in here. And then fundraising profit was determined by taking this number and multiplying it by 35%, because that's how much profit you get from what you sell. So we had to, again, put in a formula. So we put in equals and K2, because that's where that number lives, times 35 in the percent sign. And you may have sold this amount of money, but only this much comes back to help pay for your camp. And that's where we stopped. So today we're going to finish this off with the columns that are left. Okay, so total owed. We're going to do this with another um, formula. And formulas always start with an equal sign. And what you're trying to do is take the cost to go to camp minus their fundraising profit. So this is giving a suggestion that it wants to add together the two numbers you see in the orange rectangle. That's incorrect. We want to take total cost. So I can click right on G2 and I'm going to subtract from that. So the minus sign, the fundraising profit, which is an L2. I hit enter. And this is how much money I owe for camp, $24, okay? Remember, we're going to use the fill handle right here. When we put our mouse to that blue square and drag down, it's going to drag down and take that formula down. Now, you're going to notice some things happen. For example, depending on how much people sold and the profit they made, this case, this student has a negative number. What that means is the cost of a camp for this person is $297, but they made a profit from the fundraiser of $451.50. So they oversold, and so they actually have extra money that now can go and help pay maybe somebody who didn't sell anything. So like this person here, it was quite a bit. They didn't sell anything. So part of that money will probably go to that person who didn't pay anything at all. So next is the total paid. This one here is simply a number that you type in and make up. Now, what do you type in? Well, this column here, column M, is telling you how much they owe. So you can come over here and say, you know what, this person paid their whole bill, so I'm gonna say they paid $24. This person already has a credit, so we're gonna just give it a zero because they don't need to pay anything at all. All right, this person, owes $299, we're going to say that they maybe paid 200 of that. So they can either pay all of it, they could pay some of it, or if it's somebody who has a credit, a negative number in column M, they're automatically going to be a zero. Okay. So again, you can make up numbers for this. You can make some people pay all of it. You can have some people pay part of it, but anybody with a negative number gets a zero. All right, finally is the balance. So we're going to calculate what do they now, who still has to pay money? So what's left? So again, we're going to do a formula equals total owed, that's how much you owe for camp, minus total paid. 
Okay, so this person should owe zero. I remember that autofill message that comes up and saying, hey, do you want to take that formula and drag it down to all the columns? We do, so we're going to hit the check mark. And now you can see that still there are some people who owe for camp, but that's okay. That's the point of the assignment is to practice calculations. This is what Mr. Weshi has to do to keep track of anything that you guys pay so he can see who still owes money. Now, the final steps of this is we need to format these numbers for dollar amounts, okay? So we're going to start all the way from room and board, so C2, and go all the way to the last number, which should be in 07. So you're basically highlighting all of the numbers or selecting all the numbers. And you're simply going to go over and click on the dollar sign on the toolbar, and now they're all formatted for currency. Now, having done that, you may notice that some of your columns might be a little tiny and you're not seeing all the dollar amounts like on DVD here. So in that case, remember, come up here where the line splits the columns, double click on that line, and the column will grow for that information. So if any of them look kind of small, you can do that and they may adjust just a little bit. All right. Next is to take this information and put it into a chart formation. So some people don't like to look at a spreadsheet because it's just a bunch of numbers and sometimes it's hard to follow. So instead, what we're going to do is create a chart. We have to do one more formula though before we can do that. So we're gonna come over here to row eight. And you're gonna type in the word total. And you're gonna go over to where outpost, outposting starts. So it would be F8, and we're going to do this function. So sum is a function. This function we're going to use is count. So we're going to do equals count. Oh, there we go. And we're going to count how many people chose outpost. So obviously we have a very small spreadsheet here, and we probably could just do it ourselves, but we're going to make the computer do it for us. So once I put that parentheses, I can then drag the numbers. Now you would think that it's going to count 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 12. It's not doing that. Any box that has a number means that that box has something in it. So that's one. So then we have two and three and four. This one's empty, so they won't count it. And this is five. So if I put my ending parentheses mark on there and hit enter, I should get the number five. And I did. Now, you can fill across just like you fill down. So I'm going to go on this little square, and I'm going to drag it over for high ropes. I want to know how many people did high ropes, how many people did a picture, and how many DVDs do we need. Okay. So there I have those totals, and I'm going to use these totals to create a chart. So to create a chart, you're going to first highlight the information that you want. Okay. So we are going to want to have the numbers that are listed here, as well as these titles that are listed up above. So I actually have two spots that we have to highlight. So we're going to highlight the words or drag across and highlight outposting high ropes. Just those two first, sorry. That's chart one. And you're going to hold down your control key and come down and highlight the totals for those two. So we're going to say, hey, take this information and put it into a chart. So we're going to go to insert and chart. And it should create a chart showing us how many people chose high ropes, how many people chose outposting. Now it's probably going to default to a certain chart type. This one defaulted to pi. We can switch it to be like a bar chart. And then we can actually see how many of each they chose. So we have five going to outposting, four going to high ropes. And what you can do then is you have some ability to change the format of your chart by going to customize. And what we can do on there is we can put a chart title and it kind of puts in a title, but you don't have to use that one because it, this one doesn't make any sense. And we can, we can say number of students outposting or high ropes. And that goes across the top. And then we can also go in and put in labels so we can actually see how far the line goes. Now this one's pretty easy, so I don't think we'll have to do that. So I'm actually just gonna leave that there. So I put in my chart title. 
we want to make sure that we have a legend um, showing us what each of them are. Um, so you can give the position of it so I can we can see down at the bottom. This one really doesn't need a legend um, just because there's only those two categories. So we won't worry too much about that. But lastly then is you want to put it onto a new sheet. Okay. It kind of defaults itself and puts it right here in the middle of your spreadsheet. So you can move it around like a graphic or you can hit these three dots here and say move to your own sheet. And then down here you have sheet one which is your spreadsheet, and then chart one, which is your first chart you made. Okay. The second chart you're going to make is showing how many people did pictures in DVD. So you're basically going to do the same thing. You'll highlight picture in DVD, hold down control, highlight your totals, insert your chart. Okay. Same thing. You can choose a different type of layout. You could leave it at pi if you wanted. I don't, I'm going to leave that up to you as far as what you want to do. You do want to put titles on these so we can be able to see what this is about. Okay. Um, so picture or DVD. And you can, um, on the pie slice, um, it has, I think this one does. You have ability to put in data labels, but I'm not finding it on here. Let's see if we go down further. No, nope, it's not showing up on this one. So that'll be fine. Just put in your title. Same thing. Make it go on to its own sheet. And then you are done. All right. So at that point, then you'll turn in your assignment and you're finished with our Google Sheet assignment. So good luck. Have a great camp. And I'll see you when you return. Bye.